I wanted to touch on something because a lot of you have asked about it. So I wanted to at least touch on it. I don't know what I can add, but I'm going to touch on it here. There are a lot of mad people in the Big Ten, not the least of which reside in the conference office. I'm talking about you, and there's a growing sense of a total detachment between your leadership. If you're a Big Ten fan, if you're a Big Ten parent, there is this total gulf between you, like the 99% up there, and then the 1% that kind of apparently live in this, this nice administrative bureaucratic bubble and these were the same people, well chronicled, well documented now, gave you a schedule six days later, pulled the rug of the season out from under you. But do you want to really know how it's obvious that these people are detached from reality? They did not expect any pushback from you. It's growing more and more obvious that Kevin Warren, and I'm not one to heap a bunch of coals into this guy's t-shirt, by the way, because I think there are a lot of blame to go around to a lot of people up there most of whom you don't know the names of. There are university presidents and some other power players up there, and it's his job. He gets paid a lot of money to shoulder the blame. But these people didn't even think you'd push back. And I don't know, you could ask yourself, how could you ever be that ignorant? I'm not here to answer that, because like I, I live in the real world along with you. These folks don't just assume they live in the real world. If you've ever seen that gas station video, it kind of went viral a couple of weeks ago, where you know you're, someone is taking the time to film this lady who, who is pulled into a gas station, and she's trying to figure out wh which side is my gas pump on. And this is not a new car, by the way, that we're looking at. And so she pulls up, and oh my goodness, didn't pull into the right side. Pumps over here, tanks over here. So then she loops it around to where she pulls back up to a new pump, but she's pulled in in the same direction. So try number two, swing and a miss. And so then she gets out, she sees the arrow of her ways, gets back in, use it around again, try number three, swing and a miss again. And you're looking at it, and this lady goes back and forth and back and forth. It's a full-grown adult. Like, she's allowed to vote. She is taking an automobile on the open road. She's putting all of our lives in danger because this lady can't even figure out how to pump gas. And the point is, you're watching it the whole time, and you're thinking... I don't know what to say. I have no words. I'm speechless. Even an auctioneer would be speechless watching that. That's how I felt watching the Big Ten and watching this complete calamitous cluster fill in the blank that's gone down up there. And the statement that was finally put out by the league office, who knows who wrote that thing, but the statement that they passed off as Kevin Warren's statement after eight days of silence was largely laughable. It was totally reactionary. It involved or included no answers to the very simple question that a lot of you, not the least of whom being parents, have asked up there, which is why not your lawyer's version of why. We want to know actual, tangible reasons why. And Big Ten parents are mad. And they have not accepted, to say the least, the excuses that the Big Ten has given them. You had to know this was coming. I'll tell you when I knew this was coming. When they released a statement, they being the Big Ten, when they released that statement when they were canceling or postponing the season, and not only did they say we're postponing it, but it is abundantly clear. Those two words... That was a reason why I came on this program and said, pay attention, underline those two words, italicize them, bold them, abundantly clear. Anything that's abundantly clear is seen by pretty much everyone with a rational, competent head on their shoulders. There was nothing abundantly clear about this. The only thing abundantly clear is the reasons you were being given for the postponement and the actual reasons for the postponement were two different things, and you were being lied to, and you're still being lied to, in my humble opinion, by a lot of people in the Big Ten. But it was so abundantly clear that you were given no data to back it up. Now, rational people soon came to the conclusion that, wait a second, if it's abundantly clear and it's medically based, then that means you've got some data that the rest of, at the very least, the rest of the sport needs to see, if not the rest of the world. There's no reason to keep it cloaked in secrecy. This is not NASA. You don't work for the government. Why? Where's the transparency at? Well, the reason is because there wasn't anything that was abundantly clear. And so then the follow-up question is, why the secrecy? If, if you want to play the game, we all know the real reason. They don't have anything to give you. But if we want to go down this road and we want to play the game, and we want to believe that it really was abundantly clear and all the reasons they had uh, passed the smell test, 
Why no transparency? Why no sharing of anything? Why no explanation to the people this actually impacts? Not just fans, but of course, players, coaches. You got folks in the dark, and we don't even know if there was an actual vote taken up there. You got presidents, chancellors. Uh, maybe there was a vote. Maybe there wasn't a vote. I guess I need to remind some people. It's been reported. I mean, I've finally seen people talking about this. But the day after this happened, when I was doing this show, I said, you know, these aren't private institutions. Aside from Northwestern, 13 of the 14 schools in the Big Ten are public universities. You know what that means? The folks that are working behind that curtain over there making these decisions, guess who pays their salary? You do. So, humbly and respectfully, you got a right to feel any way you want to about this, and you can scream as loud as you want to about it. They should be giving you answers. Whether you accept them or not, they should at least be giving you answers up there. But the Big Ten parents, you know, the Iowa parents have pushed back really uh, forcefully today. I know Justin Fields' dad's been outspoken. I think they're planning some action tomorrow at Big Ten headquarters. More power to you. Uh, I'll be checking it out. I know that. Can't make it to Indianapolis tomorrow. Got some things to do, but I'll be pulling for you. Uh, several questions that I thought were very reasonable that they asked in their statement that they released yesterday or today. They got several people in the medical field, a Michigan doctor, for crying out loud, uh, who has, if anything, rooting interest on the Big Ten side of the fence in this thing, has come out and said, the, the reasons that they're giving, unless they have something more, and why haven't they released it if they do, unless they have something more, what they've given you right now was this thing that they expected to be able to hand you with a bunch of long medical terminology and seven-syllable words, and they just expected you to say, okay, I guess that's true, and then move on. But the problem is there are a lot of folks out there who actually have degrees in that medical field just like you do, and they've pushed back pretty fiercely on this and said, uh, this doesn't stand up at all. I had one reach out to me. One with those, those three letters next to his name, the P and the H and the D next to his name. And he said, hey, I don't know if you're interested in this or not, but this whole uh, myocarditis, I think that's what it's called. I'm not the expert, but he is. This whole deal they're trying to pass off to you is some new revelation they've discovered up there. Uh, here's, here's research that I was doing on it 20 years ago. This is no new revelation. And if that's really what they're standing on, it's clear that's not a decision that was made for medical purposes. It was a decision that was made by lawyers with maybe a doctor sitting in the back of the room to rubber stamp something. So lawsuits, I think, are coming is what I'm telling you there. It's going to be a big mess. I don't think the heat's being turned down anytime soon in the Big Ten. But I saw someone today say, well, and I think this is false, but one of the tenets of crisis management is when you find yourself in hot water, some people in the crisis management world will tell you, just sit still and take it because they only chase as long as you run. And if you don't run and you just lay there, no one wants to beat a dead horse for a long time. That is normally sound advice. That is not going to work here. They view you as running. You're sitting still, no doubt. I mean, you were in silence for eight days. You could have been in the Caribbean on vacation for all I know. But you're running as long as you haven't given them the information that's pretty reasonable that they're asking for. And they're not, you're not going to get a publicized vote count on this. You're not going to get that. I tweeted it out yesterday. You're not going to get that unless someone leaks the information. As much as you should get it, you're not going to get it. But I heard someone say that today, and then I heard someone say, I mean, why, why take any further action? It can't get any worse. You know, you're dealing with the worst of the storm right now if you're the Big Ten. Just weather it and then move on, and eventually you'll be okay. Really? You may be. You may be if those three other conferences have to cancel their seasons. Then you'll be okay. Then you'll be able to look them back in the eye, cross your arms, and say, looks like we knew what we were doing all along, doesn't it? However, as I have said from the outset, if you don't move in lockstep, if all these power fives don't cancel simultaneously and a couple of them go out and two or three of them stay at it, and those two or three that stay at it get their seasons off the ground and they're able to carry them through to the conclusion, you have not seen anything yet, the likes of which you will see in the Big Ten from parents, from players, from coaches, from assistants, on down the line. If the SEC is playing football in week six, if the ACC in week seven, Big 12, week eight, if they're playing football, if they're marching towards a conference championship Saturday in December, they will burn it to the ground in the Big Ten. 
and you'll see wholesale changes up there. And I think a lot of people, I've got some split responses on this, but I think a lot of Big Ten fans, even some of whom despise the SEC, I think they're pulling for the conferences that are still in the game to get their seasons off the ground. Because while it may be a negative short term for you competing against those conferences and recruiting and whatnot, a lot of you rightfully are looking at the situation saying that's probably what it's going to take to hit the dump button on a lot of folks that don't belong in leadership positions up here. And if that's the case, I'll hold my nose and I'll scream War Eagle or Go Sooners all I need to. Boomer Sooner, my bad. I'll scream it all I need to this year if that's what it takes. And I've sensed that as a growing sentiment in the Big Ten. So that's where I am right now. I don't know where you are. I've seen a lot of your comments.